Hey everyone. Um, welcome to the to the stream. Uh, today's uh, talk is going to be about um, running some experiments with Cockroach DB, which is a, a geo distributed database, um, and running some highly contended workloads. Um, and so the, the classic case here is YCSB, um, the the Yahoo cloud serving benchmark, I think. Um, and we're going to be running it in a in a multi-region environment, and so we're we're going to um, we're going to do some testing, and so th this is going to be a deviation from from some of our, our previous um, previous uh, watch me work um, series entries, where we're not really going to be touching much code today. We're actually going to be exploring um, the behavior of, of the system under a certain um, under a certain uh, environment uh, under a certain workload. And we're going to be looking at um, how the, the system performs. Um, we're going to be using, I think we'll probably use a tool called Jaeger to um, look at live traces of, of the workload and um, running on, a, on real VMs in the cloud. Um, and we'll see if we can learn anything, because that's really what we're going to be doing here is um, following some some test plan and seeing if we can learn anything about um, the behavior of Cockroach and whether we are performing as we would expect, um, given some variable uh, replication latency, or whether you know we're, we're falling over for, for some reason. And um, so I, I, I guess the way I was going to start this was, let's see, this is marked down. Um, what a test plan is we're, we're, we're going to be doing some benchmarking. So let's just say that the workload and I, I hope people can see this. I think people can. Um, yeah. So the workload here is going to be YCSB. Um, specifically, I think we're going to run the workload A in YCSB, which should be, um, this should be a split 50, 50 between reads and 50% writes. And so um, YCSB is known for the, um, the amount of contention that it, that it generates. And so it creates a lot of contention on certain hotkeys, um, ideas that this is supposed to be representative of a, a cloud-like or a, an internet scale um, workload. And so there are some hot uh, records and there are some not so hot records. And this is all based off some Zipfin distribution, kind of a probability distribution of um, which keys are receiving what load. And so that's kind of the, the key here is that we are going to be generating contention, read write contention, and we are going to um, see how this behaves when these writes are pretty slow. Um, and slow not in that they, um, well, well, slow because we are going to be replicating across regions for survivability. And so we're going to be replicating across three um, regions within the United States. Um, let's say, yeah, let's do a cluster topology. Let's say uh, three nodes, one in the US West, one US Central, and one in US East. And so we, we know that um, the latency here is about 20 to 30 milliseconds between each of these hops. Um, and so we would expect, if we're replicating three ways with the quorum system, we would expect any given write, regardless of where the leader is, um, will be able to achieve quorum by going to you know the the leader that's local to it, or the, the replica that's local to it, and the most the, the closest nearby um, region. And so we would expect writes to take about twenty to thirty milliseconds in the system. Um, these were replicating across regions, and so the question is whether you know that, that's fine for a given write, but whether under a contended workload where you have queues of writes that are kind of lined up because they they're all contending on each other, how, how bad does this get? And so uh, that's kind of the, the test here. And so we're going to be running those three nodes. I'm, I'm going to say, well, actually I actually have a fourth node, node for load gen, and then maybe even a fifth load here for 
um, which is our tracing um, infrastructure. So we will actually be able to pull traces from this cluster, um, traces of these, these operations, and get pretty detailed information on um, the RPCs that a given statement is running um, and exactly where things are waiting within the system. So finally, so we have the workload, we have the cluster topology. Let's talk about the, the test that we're going to run. Um, I think the first test we can run is let's run a single region upload. So we'll start off by having a the cluster just in, let's say cluster is just in US East. I'm in US East, so uh, that'll be nearby to me. Um, and th this would will behave as we are more used to seeing it, where there will be very little replication latency. And so, um, and so th this workload should be quite fast. Um, and then we're going to add in these second and third regions. So three region workload. Um, and we'll pin the leaseholder within Cockroach to US East, which is also where we will have these nodes. And then finally, uh, we'll do this. No pin release holder. Okay, so we'll run these three tests. And I don't know what we're going to find, um, but we will we'll see. Um, I think this this workload should handle the, the load quite well. Um, on the machines we're pushing, we'll, we should be able to get plenty of uh, a fairly um, good throughput number here and, and low latency. Um, and then the question will be, how, how does the system respond to these two um, extensions to the test? Um, so, yeah, I think, I think that's good. Um, why don't we spin up this cluster topology? So I guess this is five nodes total, uh, three in east, one in other two. And so I'm going to switch over to terminal. Um, and so at, at Cockroach, the engineers all have uh, access to this custom built tool that we call Roach Prod. So Roach Prod is um, this tool that helps engineers spin up ephemeral clusters to do testing, to do uh, nightly testing or ad hoc testing. Um, it's hooked up to, I think we'll be able to see, we can. Uh, we can create clusters, we can destroy them, and we can run this. We can run them in Azure, GCP, uh, AWS. Um, it really simplifies that the process of getting cloud resources to run tests. And so that's um, that's exactly what we're going to be doing here. We have a number of automated tests that are run nightly or weekly or on some cadence, and they are um, they, they use this infrastructure as well. Um, but for now, we're just going to be running. Uh, using this tool to uh, create a cluster. So we will work on create. Let's see what, yeah, so we see uh, plenty of options here. AWS, Azure, GCP, GCE. Um, let's create a cluster in GCE. Uh, we'll call this Nathan, um, MR, YCSB, multi-region YCSB. And it will have five nodes. Let's say that my GCE machine type is, actually an N1 standard four is fine. Um, now let's do, an N, let's do an N2 standard four. We're uh, forward looking and we want to use the latest hardware. Um, default though, just running everything with local SSDs. We will, um, I think this looks good. <clears throat> so let's set up the GC zones that we're, we're going to run these in. Uh, so we have five nodes. We want to run in US East. US Central, one P, I think. Let me look this up. Uh, 
All right, that, that's a, a thing. And so then, um, yeah, we'll, we'll add, we'll just specify everything. This will round robin through these zones if I don't specify everything, but we, we wanna pin these down. So we have three nodes, US East one, US Central one, US West one, and then we have these two other nodes that we'll just be using for, um, to run tracing infrastructure and then also to uh, run our load from. And so I think the last thing I need to do is say, this is gonna be a geo replicated cluster. All right, so we're, we're spinning up cloud resources and uh, here's where the, the fun will start. And so while, while this is spinning up, um, I guess I'll, uh, yeah, talk a little bit again about uh, YCSB and what this workload looks like. Um, th there's an industry standard version of this, um, it's written in Java and I think, um, yeah, we we use that when we are publishing numbers here, but um, we, we're gonna use uh, Cockroach's own version of this for now. Um, because Cockroach also has one built into its, um, actually built into the Cockroach process itself. Um, it, it's a very basic workload. Uh, YCSBA is just gonna run 50% point reads and 50% updates. And so um, we'll just be able to use the, the version built into Cockroach itself. Okay, and these are, uh, yeah, they're coming up. We see, right, one US East, Central, West, East one, East one again. Oh. I, uh, I missed these, the, the chat here. I wasn't looking at the chat. Um, how are you LinkedIn user? I'm good. Uh, I don't know who, who this user is, but I hope you were, you're doing well as well. Um, and then uh, we have the following question. Are the, these load tests or end to end automated tests? Um, it's a good question. So these tests are automated in Cockroach's nightly infrastructure. So we run these every night. We, we monitor the performance of them. Um, YCSB, we run all, all of the different variants of YCSB each night. Uh, for, for this configuration though, we don't currently run multi-region YCSB. Uh, we run multi-region TPCC for instance, or a, a TPCC-like version of, uh, yeah, um, the workload. And we do that nightly, but this will be, um, more ad hoc. And so I guess it, it's a little, it's, it's a load test. And so what I did before this is I went ahead and compiled a version of Cockroach um, that has a bit more tracing, um, a bit more uh, additional tracing right around contention events. And so we'll be able to use these and see these in a, uh, in in Jaeger when we get that up and running. Which God, um, put so we are going to put our cockroach binary, uh, just cutting off the end, call it cockroach, on all three of these machines, all five of these machines actually. Drop this over here. So we have, all right. So um, let's look at our test plan again. So we're gonna start with a single region workload in US East. And so to, to do that, I'm actually just gonna start up a single node version of Cockroach just on, on one node. So a single node Cockroach on node one 
And what we can do is prod admin URL open. We can actually, um, oh, okay. I'm running this in a, not locally. All right, um, let's just go to that. All right, there we go. So we have this cluster up and running. Um, this is the admin UI or the, the yeah, the web UI of CockroachDB um, serving it straight from the, the process itself. And we see that uh, we have 37 ranges in the system. We have one node. Because this is a single node system, everything is considered under-replicated um, in that if this machine died, we would not have availability to that data. Um, that's kind of the price we pay for not having a multi-node system and we, we will get there. Um, but for now, we have a, uh, an idle cluster and we're, we're ready to go. And so, um, yeah, the first thing we can do is run from, we're gonna use our, our fourth node as our load generator. Uh, and so we're, we're actually just gonna run a, um, a script straight from this this fourth node, and we will say um, workload. So workload is the tool built into Cockroach that um, allow it, it kind of exposes a number of workloads. Actually, let's let's look at those uh, in it. Oh. So we have um, all of these different workloads are, are available. I don't know what the Star Trek workload is, but that sounds cool. Um, the, the ones I'm more familiar with are TBCC, YCSB, uh, this KB workload. We're going to run the YCSB workload here. And so um, any Cockroach binary has access to all these workloads. And so we will init the YCSB workload. Um, and there's actually a, a nice uh, shorthand with this Roach Pride tool where I can just say, I want the, the URL of the, the first node in the system. And let's actually uh, jump back over here and we can look at the databases in the system and we see we have an empty default DB, we have an empty Postgres database, and then we have a system database and not much else. So again, this is an empty cluster, but not anymore because we are, we're gonna initialize the, um, we imported 10,000 rows and we have um, initialized a, a small version of the YCSB workload. And if we jump back over here, we can see that we now have YCSB as a database. We can see what the, the table looks like. Um, there's some interesting things we can say about this table schema actually, um, specifically around this family attribute. Um, the family attribute is, uh, it, it, it specifies a um, kind of a grouping between columns in a table. We call them column families. And this is kind of an overloaded term in uh, various systems. Um, within Cockroach, what it means is that Cockroach is mapping rows in a SQL database down to a key value store. And by default, it stores all of the rows within a, all of the columns within a row in a single key value. What this family attribute allows you to do is say, I want, you, you can specify which rows, which columns within a row are grouped together in a single key value pair. And so with mo in most cases, you just want all of the columns in a, single, uh, in a single key value. So all of them in a single column family. With um, YCSB though, what, you're, what we're really bottlenecked on is contention. And by splitting each column into a separate key value um, pair, we can have updates to different columns commute. And so we, we can actually, Split out contention and, and reduce it by an order of magnitude by uh, specifying each column is in its own column family. So that, that's that's important and it, it's also kind of cool. Um, but yeah, why don't we get to where we wanted to go and start running YCSB um, again against this the single machine? Let's actually just look at what what are the options that we can pass here. We've got a lot. We can specify the concurrency. Um, well, let's 
no, we can specify the workload. So we want to say workload A, um, which is 50% reads, 50% writes. We can say, what is the, the concurrency? Uh, how many workers do we have in, in this load generator? Um, typically, you want some function of, of the number of uh, CPUs you have available, available in your cluster. Um, I think here we can maybe start with 16. We have four, four cores on these machines. And so um, to saturate this, we may want to uh, have about four, four threads per core. Um, is there anything else interesting in here? I don't think so. All right. Well, I'll, I'll say let's let this run for 30 seconds. We have to specify again who we're talking to. So we're talking about to uh, PG URL one. And so, yeah, we, we have this up and running. Um, we can see, you know, results are streaming in. We're pushing about, I think, in aggregate, 6,000 QPS, 5,000 something. Uh, we have almost 3,000 reads and 3,000 writes per, per second on a uh, four V CPU box. And we can see this over here. Um, yeah, Getting close to, to 6,000 QPS. Uh, P99 latency is, it's reasonable. Um, all right, it's already over, that, that was quick. But yeah, let's look at the output here. We can see that the average, um, actually the P50 for reads was one millisecond. The P99 was six milliseconds. Um, the P50 for updates was 3.8 milliseconds and the, the P99 for updates is 14.2. Um, the way to think about this with YCSB is that there are a few very contended keys. And, um, and so the uh, latency distribution um, reflects the access distribution in some, some senses where you kind of think uh, P50, 3.8 milliseconds probably to touch an uncontended key and 14.2 is the latency of touching a contended key. Um, we see that at some point in time, we had about 2.8 uh, thousand selects and updates at the same time. If we jump over to the statements that we're running, uh, let's filter this by, by app, so YCSB. We just care about YCSB. Um, so we, we had a large number of selects on the user table. So these are just point reads. And so selects are a point read, not, yeah, that's pretty standard. Um, and then we actually have, they're split out by, we have a number of different types of updates because each update is only updating one of these 10 columns in, in the table. And so field five, this one set field five for whatever key to uh, some value. So we probably have 10 of these, count that up. And then this was our loading phase. So that, that all looks like what we, we would expect. Um, I think what I wanna do now, now that we have this in a way that we can, uh, we can look at it and, and watch it. I'll, I'll just start this up. I'll say, uh, let's run this for five minutes. And I'm actually going to do this in a TMUX session. All right. Yeah, let's start another one. Um, the reason why I want to do that is because I want to get Jaeger set up. So we'll try and install Docker. We can, uh, we can watch this. So we've got the load running. And what we're going to look at is, uh, I don't know if people are familiar with this. Jaeger is a, a cool tool out of, um, out of Uber that is, well, let's go to the introduction. It's a, um, it's inspired by Dapper opens up in. It's a distributed tracing system. And so we can point cockroach at the system and it will um, stream all of the, the trace events that it, uh, in the trace spans that it, it collects. And then we can visualize them all in Jaeger. And I, I doubt I did the tool justice because it can do a lot. 
Uh, but for what we're going to be using it for, we're basically, basically just using it to visualize uh, a history of trace events. So there's a nice easy way that I can run this from uh, Docker. Um, all right, so Docker is installed now on this machine. Issues with this connection. Oh, strange. So I copied over there. All right, mission error pseudo. Here we go. All right, so we, we have this running. Uh, let's let's confirm that. Um, let's just sudo docker ps. Yeah, so we now have Jaeger running on our fifth machine. And so um, what we want to do is want to look at what the IP of this machine is. Internal IP. Okay, it's something like. Yeah. Um, I wanted to know that because I, well, I want to look at Jaeger first and then, then we're going to point cockroach over to Jaeger. So we're going to take this, I think this is going to be aimed at the wrong port. We want is All right, so we have Jaeger running. This have cockroach running, and it's doing its thing. Okay, so right now it hasn't seen any traces, and so we we are going to point cockroach now at Jaeger. All right, uh, thanks for coming. Um, how do we do this? So, well, it will be helpful to remember this. We set cluster setting something equals to that. We need to figure out port. Which port we want to use? Look this up quickly. Open up a SQL shell to our first, um, our one and only node actually. And what we'll see is over in this events pane right here, we will be able to see that we just set a cluster setting. So we just changed um, a, a setting within Cockroach. And hopefully, um, what we will see is that we now have traces streaming in. We do. Okay. So Cockroach has now decided to start sending Jaeger over some information about SQL operations. Um, we can filter this down to just the SQL transactions. And so, yeah, why don't we look at a SQL transaction? Um, most recent. These sessions all look like internal SQL transactions. Did we stop running? We did stop running YCSP. Okay, let's, let's kick that up here. All right. We accidentally stopped running YCSB just before we set up tracing. But we're back. Here we go. These look better. And so we see that, uh, yeah, let's look at this, this one. So we can see, um, what are we running? We're running an update statement. Um, and we can see some pretty cool things here. We can see that, um, Warning, the clock's you just stable. Okay, this is a warning from Jaeger, I think. 
So this entire statement took 1.92 milliseconds to run. Um, we we ran the statement and that created a flow uh, span, which created a materializer span, which uh, eventually resulted in a put request being sent. So this is an interesting reason why the uh, column family part was so important is that this allows Cockroach to perform a, I think it does, a, a blind put. Um, we don't need to query the, the, the row because we're gonna replace all of the portion of the row that we are inserting into. Um, is that true? I'm not actually sure if that's true. But anyway, we, we see this, um, this operation being sent down to uh, Cockroach's key value layer, send batch one put one end transaction. And this um, and this goes through on range somewhere, range thirty nine. It uh, acquires latches. It scans the lock table for conflicting latches or conflicting locks. Um, it performs a one PC operation, which is a fast path for transactions that are only writing to a single range, um, or they don't actually have to acquire locks or um, go through a, a two phase commit atomic commit protocol, and it. Uh, it eventually commits. So this this was a pretty happy transaction. Why don't we look at a uh, a transaction that um ran for at least ten milliseconds to try to see where things getting worse, kind of further in the tail. So here's one that ran for fifteen milliseconds. An update statement again. Um, doesn't look like we captured all of this this uh, span in the year. There we go. So we were updating the table, another update. Um, and there was a lot of blocking right here. We see that this took nine milliseconds. So what, what's up with that? Yeah, so we, that's interesting. There's a lot of blocking right between, um, Okay, so we're performing a get operation. And we get all the way through, we grab a, a lock, an unreplicated lock on this, this row. Um, and then we complete and there's about eight milliseconds, nine milliseconds of blocking in here. I don't actually know why we would block at that point, but that's kind of why we're doing this. Maybe we'll find some interesting things. Let's um, try to see if there's, there's a pattern here with some of these other slow operations. So in this case, going through raft was what took a very long time. Okay, well, it seems like we have Jaeger hooked up well um, and we we're getting reasonable performance. Um, not great, these are small machines and we're, we're pushing some load at them. Um, so they actually load degraded over time. I don't know why we started up again and now load is much slower. Um, it's a little strange. I think I was running the same thing the second time. But uh, yeah, why don't we jump back and we're, we're gonna shut down this cluster because that was mostly a test and we're gonna run, we're gonna start up a, a multi-region version of this. So I'm going to Roach Broad, Clear, Nathan, MR, YCSB, one. Thanks, Olya. I should uh, add a chat overlay here. It's kind of cool. Um, okay, so now we have started a three-node cluster, and I think we'll have to reset the cluster setting that we had. 
but let's uh, confirm this. Um, we have three nodes now, not just one. So there are three machines in this cluster and the under-replicated ranges are going down. We're up-replicating across the three regions, US East, US Central, and US West. Um, yeah, they're all uh, catching up now. I think we are almost there. We have no under-replicated ranges anymore. And so we have right, one machine in each, four CPUs in each. Um, and so what we need to do is kind of go back um, and um, initialize the uh, cluster, or initialize YCSP again. So I believe that required commit YCSP. And I lost this, so I'm going to do this again. Okay, so tracing set up. We do we have a do we have a um or a, a table? We do. Okay. So yeah, field one. There we go. Um, and one other thing we were going to do according to our test plan is for this case, we're going to pin the leaseholders to US East so that we are only worrying about replication latency. That, that's the only added um, cost here. We don't have to worry about um, potentially the leaseholders not being where we want them to be. And so let's uh, go ahead and do that. And so to, to do that, actually, we can use some, some new stuff in Cockroach. Um, let me kind of show this off. So we show cluster regions, show region from cluster. Right. So we have three regions here um, in the cluster. Cockroach is aware of those regions, um, but right now it's not really doing much with them. What we want to do is make this a multi-region database. And so we're going to alter database by CSV. Um, we're going to say this: the primary region is U.S. East one. I think this is an identifier, so we need to double quote it. So we have a primary region, and we are going to now add some other regions. Add region U.S. Central, and. We're going to add US West. And this is going to do some interesting things in, in Cockroach. It is, um, oh, yeah. It, so it's going to create a multi region database. So now I can say show regions from database YCSB. So we now have three regions in here. I can look at show served by uh, maybe show databases. I can see that my survival goal is only zone. So I do want to survive regions here. Um, so I'm going to say alter database YCSB uh, survive uh, region failure. All right, great. So now we are surviving a region failure. And because my primary region for this database is US East 1, all the, the leaseholders, um, kind of the, the leaders of this data will be in US East 1. And so we can see that by going show ranges from table KB YCSB. Uh, no, I think it's the user table. In my leaseholder locality, there's a single range, 38. My leaseholder is in US East 1. Perfect. So that's, that's what we wanted. All right, so now we can get to running this workload. And so, um, yeah, it's helpful to think what kind of latency we expect here. Uh, and let, let's look actually over on the, what is the network latency between machines? We can see that US East Replicating to US Central is about 31 milliseconds, and US East all the way to US West is 65 milliseconds. 
um, given given that we are going to um, only need to wait for a majority of nodes to acknowledge any right. We will only need to wait for uh, for US Central to acknowledge US East's proposals. And so we should expect rights to take about 31 milliseconds. Um, and because there's a lot of contention, we should expect any contending read to, to take a similar amount of time. What I think is going to happen, though, is that we're going to build up a queue of, of pending rights to a given key to those hotkeys, to just a few hotkeys. And so that will actually mean that latency will grow um, kind of by, by the length of that queue. And the, the queue should get up to, I guess if we have concurrency 16, it'll get up to 16. Um, why don't we start just with a concurrency of one? So this is just a, a single concurrent reader or writer. And I think we would expect in this case for um, you know very fast reads, and then we would expect maybe 30 millisecond writes. I think we have this all set up and ready to go. Let's see if that, that's right. Yeah, there we go. So what we see is that reads are, uh, it's just a, a hop from the load generator in US East right over to the cockroach node in US East. And so reads are quick. Writes are taking about 35 milliseconds, um, which is a little above our network round trip time to US Central from US East. So that fits our expectations. Right, and so we can probably see this over in Jaeger. Say, yeah, the min duration, say, it's like one of those 30 millisecond transactions. Yeah, remember to keep this running. So we see a very large gap between when we propose the write and when we actually, um, when it makes it through raft. And so I, I thought we had some way of seeing actually the, um, yeah, the traces as they propagated through raft. Why don't we take a look at that? Because it would be nice to see proposing um, and kind of watch how this actually moves through Raft. Uh, let's take a look. Okay, so if log v1 or trace, so I think we can enable this tracing with a cluster setting, actually. Let's try that. Um, let's go to our shell. Maybe we had that here. So what do we want? We want the V module. So let's look in the built-in. It's here to be internal set V module. Okay, so we now uh, we should get some better tracing into exactly what's going on in the, at the raft level. Um, I think this may just be local, and so I, I do want to um, just make sure we're setting this also on the, the second node. All right, good. So let's try that again, and I also wanted to see whether there was um, say where this starts. Insert start sequential. No. Great, so we see that again. Let's flip over to Jaeger again and see if there's anything new. Three seconds ago. No, it doesn't look like we're getting events. Oh, well, no, we are. Sending message app, sending message app. And not much more. Hmm. Can we sort by most spans? Would that help? 
No, post events. Okay, well, we're not gonna be able to, I guess, see that, but what we will be able to see when we start pushing any real concurrency here, these, our, our throughput's pretty low because we have no concurrency, right, is we should be able to see contention. We should see some, some not so great things happen. Throughput will grow, but latency will also grow. So let's just push for concurrent writers. So this all looks good, actually. Um, certainly, the, the contention isn't bad enough that it started really creeping in even to our 99th percentile. And so our, our throughput grew linearly. So that's good. Um, let's push it harder then. Let's say, what happens when I push 16 concurrent writers here, or readers and writers? And... So now we're up to 400 QPS, still not bad. We, we see that our tail is a little choppier than it was before, right? We're, we're getting um, you know, up to 60 millisecond reads and some longer writes because you, even, the, even the, sorry, 60 millisecond writes and some longer reads because even the reads are going to have to wait on, on these um, locks while they're going through uh, raft. And so, yeah, let's uh, let's try to see what's going on here. Let's say uh, I want to see what's in the tail, and the tail was somewhere around yeah 50 milliseconds. So let's let's look at a trace from 50 milliseconds onward. Eager might be uh, can't imagine that it's having issues with the 400 QPS we're pushing. I guess 800 with reads and writes. Still, take a look actually. Yeah, so we're up to 830 QPS. Here, here. did Jaeger crash? We're, we're using. Jaeger through its uh, traced memory. So sometimes the way I'm kind of doing this is sometimes I think booms. Let's just try to run it again. It's already running. My web browser would disagree. All right, we're going to kill you, Jaeger, and start again. RM. Nope, I don't know Jaeger very well, but I think this all-in-one midge is um, meant for testing. And it's not really meant for production uses or, um, yeah, even what we're doing here maybe is, is pushing it a little bit. But we're back online with Jaeger, which is great, I think. Um, so we're still pushing load. So let's say I want to see anything that's taking more than 50 milliseconds. There we go. So let's take a look at one of these traces. It's an update statement. And it helps in Jaeger. You can kind of collapse these spans down so you can see top level. Ooh, here we go. So we see. Uh, Taking 51 milliseconds in total, um, we have about 17 milliseconds spent here and 33 spent here. So that's kind of interesting because we know that the the trace is supposed to take the, the transaction is supposed to be, take about 33 milliseconds, and so this must be the right portion that must be going through raft. Yeah. So that that's a huge consensus. What's not as expected um, is that the the initial scan is um, taking this long. Why is that?
So we're not seeing what I was expecting to see, which would be scanning lock table for conflicting locks. We should see that that's quite fast. We see a large gap between so returning here and processing the uh, finishing up this call batch scan. Not exactly sure what that would mean in this case. I'm going to take a look at another. So that's not one of ours. So look at this. Here we go. This looks more like what I was expecting. Yeah. So this is contention here where we're acquiring latches during the read. Um, and that means that we have to scan the lock table for conflicting locks. Well, sorry, we're acquiring latches and that itself is what's taking long, a long time. Um, okay. And so I think what I wanna do is just really crank up this concurrency so we can really see some uh, long queues. I'm gonna say 48 and here's where we're gonna see even P50 is probably gonna get slow. Maybe not. We're up to 1600 QPS. But we see yeah, the tail is starting to get kind of out there. Um, let's look at something, a 260 millisecond. Wait, let's look at one that's um, 150 milliseconds or more. Here, here's a scan, and here we see again um, requiring latches, and that process takes 114 milliseconds, which means someone. Interesting. So we waited in the lock wait queue. So we're waiting for one of these locks to free up and we have one queued reader and it waited for 40 milliseconds. Okay, this still, how do you believe it latches? <laughs> I, uh, yeah. I think, so this must be showing that, um, I mean, we certainly expect latches to be held for upwards of 35 milliseconds while there, there's replication going on, but we don't expect here, we see about three times that. Um, it'd be interesting to see why a latch was held for this long. And then, um, yeah, let's let's try to really get this to collapse under, under contention. Let's, uh, cause we were still, our P50 wasn't affected yet, and we really want to see. Uh, once the P50 starts getting affected, that means that throughput's going to get limited. Um, so let's let's jump this up to uh, 256. Red do on here. There we go. So under this level, even our, our P50 is getting up there. Um, okay. If we were doing this for longer, we'd want to figure out a, a better way to run a Jaeger that was a little more stable. But um, for now, I think we can we can carry on with this. And let's let's take a look at something that I think we saw some very bad latency in our tail. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's look at something that's taking over a second. So this is a read. Here we go. This was this was I was hoping to see. Um, so th this is a up here. We see a select. So we're selecting from 
just one row. Um, we were using column family, so that means that there are 10 keys under the hood within Cockroach um, that are backing this row. So the scan of this one row needs to scan over those 10 keys. And given that this is probably a very hot row, kind of the point of this uh, workload, um, we're probably gonna enter uh, queues on each of, or some of those rows. And we'll see if we see that. So we, waiting in lock with queues. So actually, um, well, yeah, okay. Scanning locks, waiting lock weight queues. So if we wanted to dig in deeper, I think this would be interesting. Why are we holding lock latches for more than the replication latency? Um, there's, yeah, we, we'd want to figure that out. That's not meant to happen. Um, and then we see we're going to wait in lock weight queues. And so we wait for, Yeah, so we have a nice long queue of 21 writers and seven readers just on this one key. And so they're all kind of waiting for the head um, of, of the, the queue to proceed. The, the way that these lock weight queues work is that the, the queued readers are always kind of put at the front of the queue and they all flush at once at when the, the head pops off. And then the queued writer is allowed to then slide in and replace um, whoever's in front of it. And so the, the queues allow us to avoid thrashing. Um, even when we have heavy contention, these things kind of get a little more orderly where um, there's a single lock and you will queue up on that. Um, but it also means that if you have 21 waiters on, on this lock, then uh, we can do the math here. 21 times 30 is um, I don't know, 600, 630 uh, milliseconds. So we'd uh, we expect the the average latency to update this row to be at least 630 milliseconds, um, which uh, that, that's just kind of uh, it's interesting to to think through um, the effect there. Pushing, yeah. So we are we wait in a few different lock weight queues along the way. Um, wait for transaction. For transaction, it's interesting that we are ever pushing. Hmm. Must be hitting a live in this push. I mean, eventually, we get to the point where we we perform the read. That was one point four seconds. So the, the entire time is spent doing this read. Um, Yeah, I think this is just part of pushing. So yeah, th this was mainly what I wanted to, to see here is that we could see um, under, and I'm, I'm pushing 256 uh, concurrent readers and writers at this system. And with with high, uh, with high a few hot keys, those keys get quite hot. Um, and since each write needs to go through raft, it needs to replicate, which takes at least 35, 30, 35 milliseconds, um, this starts to, to build up, especially when a, a scan then needs to scan over multiple um, multiple locks. And so, yeah, I think there's, we could go on for another few hours. Um, in fact, I, I probably will, but um, I, I wanted to, I guess, get, give a taste for the types of experiments that go into, um, trying to improve a system like this. Um, I think for all the other videos we had here, everything has been coding. And yet that's probably you know, not representative of where some, or I don't wanna say majority, but a good chunk of time is spent. Um, a good chunk of time is figuring out what to even code and what to even change in the system, um, trying to understand the system better, uh, however, however we can. Um, and so this, uh, there's a lot here. This is a meaty, uh, a meaty example, even, even with just a basic workload, um, you start making things slower and, um, you're you really start stressing your concurrency control, uh, mechanisms. So, uh, I, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I think we, we learned some things and, um, we also saw Jaeger, which is a cool tool. Um, 
I guess we'll, we'll, we'll need to figure out how to make the Jaeger a little more, more stable. Um, or it probably, I mean, just how to deploy it in a way that's a little more stable because I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's, it's a, a, a very uh, solid tool. Um, so cool. Thanks everyone for, for coming. And um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your week. Bye.